Okay, so like Haman, I will also be speaking about college tuition. Um, my main topic is college tuition and graduation rates. And my main claim for this is that raising college tuition will negatively, negatively impact the graduation rate. So can you guys raise your hand if this factor of price or the sticker price of college tuition was one of the factors for choosing your college? Okay, can you raise your hand if that was the only factor that determined whether you were going to be here at Cal Poly or somewhere else? So, I will support this with three secondary claims. My first being uh, that a greater student debt will result in um, discouragement for students to pursue a higher education. Increasing college tuition will negatively impact the socioeconomic status in more communities. And third, uh, the higher cost of education will further influence middle and lower class students to settle for trade school or entry level jobs. So many of us have had to give up uh, dream schools of prestige, not because of our academic standing, but because of financial support. So most of us even made that uh, decision only on the financial being of the support, where you were going to get the money from. So. Yet we're here paying for college, and as me as a first year, I have already signed my name into debt, pulling out loans, and I still don't have a guarantee, um, like settlement or anything that I will graduate and I will get that bachelor degree. Especially now with college tuition increasing for Cal State universities. So according to the National Center for Education Statistics. Um, for the 2014 and 15 academic year, the average price for a public institution was estimated at $16,000 out of pocket for uh, room and board and tuition. This was including fees. Um, uh, secondary, that year after, following year, the middle class uh, t in 2016, according to Pew Research Center, was estimating a maximum of $55,700 dollars on average and that starting point that determined the median middle class was 29,000 that's almost um, double what the tuition cost if tuition co is costing 16,000 it's only 13 more to make it your whole annual um, spending um, what you have to spend so I plan on bringing light to the situation with my three main claims and first and foremost the greater student debt will result in discouragement for students to pursue a higher education. Speaking in terms of personal experience, like I just mentioned, I've already signed my name off on loans just to be here today speaking in front of all. So according to the U.S. Department of Education, over the past three decades, uh, tuition at a four-year college has more than doubled, even after adjusting for inflation. Between 1992 and 2012, the average amount owed by a typical student loan borrower, borrower uh, who graduated with a bachelor's degree was more than double to a total of nearly 27000 This is debt, which will most likely, if not continued on and you don't make the revenue that you put into it, will result in default. So the co college nowadays is more expensive than it's ever been. That's just logical and it's only increasing further on. Which brings me to uh, the second supporting claim. Increasing college tuition will negatively impact the socioeconomic status in more communities. If we already have uh, many communities that are meeting that lower uh, socioeconomic status, which by definition uh, means that socioeconomic <coughs> status means is an, is an economic and sociological combined total measure of a person's work, work experience and of an individual's or family's economic and social position in relation to others based on income, education, and occupation. So income, education, and occupation. If you don't have the income to receive an education, how are you going to get an occupation? You stay with an occupation of a minimum wage job, or you settle for something less than what a bachelor degree would have gotten you. So the cycle of the socioeconomic status works like this. If I come from a poor family and I'm struggling to go to a college, it is less likely for me to achieve that 
just because of the financial support that I have carrying me over to the next. So further on, if I have children and I don't, like let's say I don't make it to graduation and I don't graduate or I can't get a job that is like highly occupied or I can't get a, a high paying job or anything like that, I can't further on my socioeconomic status. Therefore, my offspring will have less chances of furthering their own. And that will start affecting more communities. Um, and that's just from personal experience. Like, um, I had to get scholarships and loans and all this just to pay for this. And it's still not guaranteed. So study, and this is how it'll, it'll work out as a cycle, and I'll explain it with the American Psychological Association. Um, they published the following. So low socioeconomic status, and it correlates such as uh, lower education, poverty, and poor health ultimately affect our whole society. More, the, more of the facts are um, children, this is from grades one to five, at a low, uh, low socioeconomic environment, acquire language skills more slowly and exhibit delayed letter recognition and phonological awareness and are at risk at reading difficulties. Some of them even reading at levels third grade at the grade of seventh grade. At the, yeah, at grade seven. And in 2007, in the same study, high school dropout rates in a low socioeconomic income level households and environments was at 16.7% versus the 3.2% at higher income and higher socioeconomic status. 167 to 3.2% high school dropout before college. And last but not least is the influential effect that higher cost for an education will further influence middle and lower class students to settle for a trade school or entry level job. I will go on to personal experience for this as well. So for Barstow High School, my, my alma mater before college, um, we had an exiting survey and according to the Barstow High exiting survey, less than 20%, less than 20 um, individuals out of 300, out of graduating class of 301 students, that's less than 10% actually enrolled into a four year college, tuition, uh, college program or private, public, yeah, only listed private and public. The rest of them, uh, this is just accounting from um, my personal experience, have moved on to BNSF, which is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe um, Corporation, a railroad company, and are making what they could have made with a bachelor's degree. They opted for that option because the, the degree of a bachelor's degree was devalued for them. We are also, in Barstow, we are also surrounded by four major military bases being further away. Um, Edwards Base, the Air Force Base, and the Milita Military Corps Base. So many of them opted for jobs there, just because it was a military job, and you either wanted to pursue a military career or did not want to, a college degree because they, do, they didn't see a value in it. So, with all these supporting claims, my point is that college tuition, it is impossible for it to be free because of how economic, the economic standing works. And even though our generation opted for Bernie Sanders' model, which was to make college free, that is not, that is not logical. So I believe, and my main claim supports that college tuition should be adjusted to meet the student's availability for pay and not keep increasing how it is now. It is significantly and negatively impacting graduation rates and will only further impact them in the future. Thank you.
All right. Well, I don't know how much uh, controversy there is over whether or not uh, tuition has an impact on students. I think everybody understands that there's going to be some effect. But uh, your argument is that it affects, uh, it has a negative impact on uh, graduation rates. And uh, I didn't really hear any data on graduation rates later in the speech. I thought that was a little problematic. There's a good preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. At the end of the speech, you do a summary of it. By the way, that third point you don't get to until you've already spoken for seven minutes. So you're already a minute over time by the time you get to that third point. So that's a problem. Uh, that'll be an issue, you know, especially in the future, because when we do the debates, I cut you off. We have to be able to get them in within a specific amount of time. So you're going to have to move a little bit more quickly and uh, efficiently in making your point. Uh, the signposts of the supporting points are pretty good. Your evidence, I think, is a little thin in a couple of places. Um, the whole thing, for instance, about the socioeconomic status uh, gets a little confusing. You've got some good statistical information in there, but I don't always know what it is that supposed to mean. So, for example, you mentioned uh, the tuition rate increasing twice over the three decades, and then you've got this loan rate that students are leaving with uh, $27,000 in debt, and then you've got another piece of data that talks about, uh, you know, what the uh, average uh, incomes are, I guess, in these socioeconomic groups. I'm going, well, wait a second, how is that connected to the point that you're talking about? And that was not very clear. I, I, it just got confusing there, and you need to uh, explain that more and, and show us how that data is leading to the conclusion that you're talking about. I don't think that that uh, worked out very well for you. You know, generally, you're saying things I think most people understand. If you if, if something costs more, it's uh, harder to achieve. Although there, there is this also uh, an argument that suggests that uh, it drives people into other jobs. I was a little confused when you talked about the Burlington Northern uh, group that uh, in the area where you you graduated high school, then they can get a starting salary that would be the equivalent of what somebody would get when they get a bachelor's degree. I'm going, well, then why would they, you know, if they don't need that in order to get that uh, salary, that seems like it's a good trade-off for them. They don't have any student debt. They've lost the 27000 They've got a job that's making enough income for them. That seems to kind of contradict the position that you were taking earlier, that people are going to get stuck in a socioeconomic class that's problematic. I, my guess is that you suggest that there isn't any growth in that, but that argument needed to be developed a little bit more. There's not really much relationship to the fact that people choose that because of college tuition costs. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that that is the point. Maybe people just, uh, you, know, you know, I think you, you take that as a presupposition, a given, instead of documenting it. Uh, I'd talk more, but we're already well into this time limit on this speech, so we have to move on.